Hi everybody, I'm Joey Poole and I'm an indie author. My name is Stephanie. I write underneath the pen name S.M. Woodson and these are the publishing questions. I don't really have a favorite publishing platform. I like using KDP, I like using Smashwords, which has now become Draft Digital, all the two have merged together. They each have their own things to add to the publishing experience, but I don't really have a favorite. So the publishing platforms I've used, mainly have used Draft Digital, Amazon, and now I've like ventured into like Kobo and Google Play directly. But the two main ones, Amazon and Draft Digital, I like Draft Digital better because I'm able to send it out to more than one location. But as far as because it's easy to just load up your manuscript and they send it out to everywhere, including Amazon if you wanted to. Um, although um, I do see the benefit of publishing on Amazon because they're larger than most other places. But I say for this one, draft to digital because it's easy to do. And I'm able to publish it to, Amazon, to Apple from draft to digital. I format my ebooks myself. I do it in Word, which is not as easy as it sounds. I'd love to be able to use something like Vellum, but I don't have a Mac and my internet isn't reliable enough to use Mac in cloud, but otherwise it's it's all done myself. I actually format my books and ebooks by myself. I like start writing a Scrivener and then I export it to my word processing and then I use Kindle Create to make the ebook version for Kindle. And then draft to digital they have i upload it to there and then they send it out so i do it myself i do have a go-to cover designer it's my best friend she is very talented and has designed all my covers and without her they would not look anywhere near as good and i wouldn't be able to publish anywhere near as many books i also design my own covers uh I use a mix between like pixels, pixel um, images on Pixel and Pixabay that are uh, free to use, and then images, free to use images from Canva. Uh, I do it all myself. I am a full-time author in that this is my job. I don't make enough money to live off my writing, but it is the job that I do. It's the only one I have. I am a full-time author. It is my only job right now. Uh, I also am a full-time mom and I also homeschool my kids. Uh, my husband stays at home full-time. We travel and uh, he doesn't have to work, but he is choosing to work and he does work remotely. So I'm a full-time author, full-time mom, full-time teacher, all rolled into one. No, I don't publish under any other names. Joey Paul is technically a pen name, but it's not at the same time. It's very similar to my actual name, and I've never felt the need to have different pen names and all the rest of it. I used to publish underneath two different uh, names. I used my coming of age novels were Stephanie Marie Whitson, and my romance novels were Stephanie Whitson, but now I'm putting everything under SM Whitson, which stands for Stephanie Marie Whitson. Blackout was my debut, it was my first book, and it was released back in 2005, so I've been doing this for about 17 years now, and the experience back then was very, very different to how it is now. I had very little ability to do it all myself, I had to hire people to publish the book for me because there was just no, there was no KDP, there was no Kindle, there was no self-publishing in the way that it is now. So that's one of the reasons why my first book came out in 2005, but my second book didn't come out until 2011, 2012, just because there wasn't, there wasn't the ability to do it. So I had to just live with it. My very first publication was Tears of Yesterday. It's the first um, novel in my coming of age series. I felt excited to publish it. And then I had like this two week of dread of like, oh my goodness, people I actually know in real life are going to be able to read what I wrote and judge it. Um, I, at the point I was like, okay, I'm a published author. I was really, I am really excited to be a published author. I was really excited to be a published author. I was going to release it 
like in November, but I ended up releasing it October 26th because it was ready and my kids were like, really? Publish it, publish it. So that was really exciting. I have learned so much from watching not just other author tubers, but other authors go through the process. I've picked up tips, I've worked out what works for them and what might work for me and just all of that rolled up in one. I think being part of the AuthorTube community has really helped level up things but it's also being part of the writing community on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook etc etc. I think it's something where while you're the one doing it for yourself in at least as, as an indie author you do pick up on bits and pieces from other authors around you and it really is just it's a huge learning experience i feel like um sarah canis taught me with like marketing things um and then when i've when i've had questions about specific vendors or how to do certain things or um things like that nature um liar parish from the courtney project has helped me I think those definitely are the two that have helped me as far as like people um, on AuthorTube. And other than that, I've just had a couple of people beta read for me. So yeah. I think that I want to learn more about how to promote my books other than on YouTube. Because YouTube is more like a community of authors. It's not really a place to reach out to readers, although there are some readers that have connected with me on YouTube. Um, just how to grow a readership following, how, what the heck is do I put in my newsletter? How do I entice people to sign up for my newsletter? Because I don't have a reader magnet right now. I don't even know how to do that sort of thing. So just the promotion side of publishing. I don't have a favorite independent author in that I read so many books. I mean, I've nearly read 400 this year. So I read an eclectic taste of traditional, of indie, of hybrid authors. And I don't have one that stands in mind as a favorite. It would really just depend on the genre. The time being, I'm drawing a blank, which is just typical. But I do have a lot of favorite authors. I do have a lot of favorite books. I can't think of one independent author who is my favorite. I have two favorite independent authors. I, all three. Um, two, three? I think the first two off the top of my head is um, Kennedy Fox. Is they like, um, they write cowboy, small town romance with cowboys and green hands. And I really like that sort of thing. And I like Sarah Cannon's uh, books because they're like YA, but magic at the same time. If I could start again, I would um, not make some of the mistakes I made. Like I, when I originally started publishing my other books after Blackout, I didn't wait for my covers to be professionally done. I didn't wait for that kind of stuff. And it really did bite me in the backside while the books were out there. The covers were very amateurish and they weren't selling the book because people would look at them and think, oh, why would I read that? So I wish I'd waited. I wish that I'd um, done more research into ads and into how to publish and stuff like that. When I first started publishing after Blackout, it was KDP and stuff was still very new. It was very much a new thing. And I think I jumped in a bit too quickly without making sure that I had all my ducks in a row. This one's a good one. If I had an opportunity to start fresh as an author, what I would do differently is I would um, start my start my website sooner, start my newsletter sooner, um, publish like short story type stuff on my website, and do more of the process on videos on my Instagram before I publish instead of publish my first book and then do all that stuff. I would want to dedicate my Instagram more towards gathering readers as opposed to a little bit of everything. Um, but I mean, I mean, yeah, I think that's what I would say. I would say have my book ready and then like build up my following, build up my website and newsletter and then release it instead of that.